All right, so this video is kind of part two of the uh, video I set, started. I actually went through and uh, graphed all these different lines because in this uh, problem number four, all they gave me was a blank uh, coordinate plane. They didn't give me the actual graphs or the lines, so I had to graph them myself. So if you're like, where do these uh, green, blue, and purple lines come from? It's because I've already done the work and made the graphs myself. If you're watching this and you're like, I don't know where these lines came from, you can go back to the video um, and you can watch it uh, back to that video in the video uh, previous videos that I've done before. All right, but this time I'm focusing on all the questions, domain, range, the intercepts, increase, decrease, all that stuff. All right, so let's talk about domain. So what are the possible x values that this graph can be? Okay, well, again, it looks like my graph, if it's going left to right, the green arrow is going up, but it's also going out to the left, so meaning eventually, if I let it go on forever, it would go to negative infinity. Okay, and I'm looking at my graph here, and it doesn't seem, okay, there's, I see an open circle, but see that closed green circle above that open blue circle? So that means it's still, my domain doesn't have any disclusions yet or somewhere where I need to stop. So I can keep going. And as I keep going to the right, again, the blue line covers pretty much everything else. So that means that my domain is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. The only point that I was semi-worried about was the open circle. But the open circle is, has a closed dot right above it, meaning I can include that point right there. All right, let's talk about the range, meaning the smallest my graph is going to go, and I mean the lowest, and then the highest my graph can go. So as far as the lowest my graph is going to go on the y-axis, it's actually going to be at negative 3, and that is where that straight purple line is right there. So the range will begin at negative 3. That's the lowest it's going to go. And then here's what's interesting. So in between negative 3 and negative 2, there's no graphs, right? So let me kind of highlight that space right here. So in between, whoops, excuse me. So this space right here. See how there's nothing happening? I mean, my circles are kind of like touching that highlighter blue. But see how there's like no graph in between that? So my interval starts at negative 3. Okay, I can include negative 3. That's fine. But there's literally no, there's nowhere else it can go, right? Like it's... Like it's staying at negative 3 because that purple line has a constant slope or a zero slope. So it's not going to increase or decrease. So, at, so this is what you do. So you have to include negative 3, but it doesn't go past negative 3. So you have to do negative 3 to negative 3. Okay. We can include negative 3 and we can include it. So, that's, so it, the domain starts there. Okay. But then you have to pick it up again. Okay, so union, and it starts picking up at negative 2, right, where the blue open circle is. We can't include negative 2, but can we include everything else going up? Yes. So what, now the graph is going up, up, up forever, so we can go to infinity, but I can't include infinity. So that one was kind of weird because the range definitely starts at negative 3, right, but it's not going up anywhere. It's a flat zero slope, so, we, so the range starts from negative 3 to negative 3, basically saying we need to make sure we include it in our range, but then it picks back up at negative 2, and then it goes all the way up to infinity. So that was a semi-tricky one. All right, y-intercept. Uh, let's see, right here, and that's at 0, 4, and there we go. That's all we got. All right, x-intercepts. Again, we might have to estimate, but it looks like one is right here, and that is at We'll say it's negative 2, comma, 0. Okay. And then we have another one. It appears to be right about here, just past negative 3. So you know what? I'll just be, you know, I'll just say it's negative 3. It's close enough, and I'm just making you estimate. So we'll say it's negative 3. Why not? All right, so negative 2 and negative 3. Now, I know you guys might have a different answer, or maybe my graph is poor, but, again, we're just estimating. Now, for the zeros, again, we need the actual x values where it crosses. So not the ordered pairs, but the x values. So the zeros are at negative 3 and negative 2. Those are the two x values where the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, so negative 3 and negative 2. All right, intervals of increase. Okay. So where is it increasing? Well, 
it's going to start increasing at negative 3, right? And again, we're talking about x values. So it increases at negative 3. But can I include negative 3 where it starts to increase? No is the answer. Because, well, wait, what about that green dot that has closed? But that is decreasing, right? See that line, how it's decreasing going left to right? Where it starts to increase is the blue line. And the, starting at the blue line, it's not inclusive. So we can't include negative 3. So we put a parenthesis. All right? And then it's going to go up forever and ever and ever. So that means it's going to increase to positive infinity. And we can't include infinity. All right, decrease. So... Again, that's the green part of the graph there. So, again, it's going, it's going up, and it's also going out to negative infinity. And then it stops decreasing when we get to, I believe that's going to be negative 3. And we can't include infinity, but this time we can include negative 3 because it has a closed dot right there on the green line. All right, interval of constant. So this is something that's new that we discussed in another video. But the interval of constant is any place where there's no slope. So basically a horizontal line, and that's the purple line. So the interval of constant, meaning where is there an interval where it's just flat? Well, it starts at negative 1. I mean, excuse me, positive 1, which we can include, all the way to infinity, right? There's an interval where it's going to be constant. Now, which is interesting that, see how the blue kind of overlaps the purple? Meaning it's both increasing and constant at the same time, which is typical of piecewise fun functions. You're going to have a lot of different things going on. So it's possible to have an interval of increase as well as an interval of constant. So that's okay with piecewise. All right, points of discontinuity, again, where the kind of graph kind of separates from each other. It looks like at the x value, x equals negative 3 because it's right here, right? So there's an open circle, closed circle. So at x equals negative 3. An extrema, meaning is there a place where there's a relative minimum or maximum? But like I talked about in the previous video, yes, there is a place where it goes from decreasing to increasing, but because they're disconnected or disjointed, I can't actually use that as an extrema, so this is not applicable. All right, so that kind of goes through... Uh, all the kind of things you need to know. The trickiest thing was the range right there because there's a gap of numbers which aren't included. So that was tricky. And then also the, uh, there's an interval of increase and interval of constant happening on the, at the same time. But with piecewise functions, that sometimes happens. So don't worry much about that.